Welcome to Commander Tunes for the Nitpicking Nerds. In this video, we've got a Yaruk special deck tech for our patron, Fish Lamp Clock. Yes, and this video is in honor of his deceased dog, Samson. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the Nitpicking Nerds We're bringing you daily magic content, all commander based, well, most of it. If you want to support the channel, you can go to Patreon. It's the best way to do that. And I want to wish happy birthday. To everyone whose birthday it is, as usual. Yeah. Happy birthday, everyone. Get hyped for your birthday. We also have affiliate links in the description if you want to support us in other ways. TCGplayer.com is one of them. Go there. Buy the cards you're going to buy anyway. Maybe the upgrades to the stack, like Fish Slam Clock's going to do. And hey, you're going to be supporting the nerds. Same is also true for DragonShield.com. Go there. Buy the best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. And you'll get to support the nerds without spending any extra dollars. Both of those links work exactly that way. we got to talk about what a Commander Tune-Up is first. Cherries, what is it? A Commander Tune-Up is where we take your patron-submitted deck and under your restrictions, budget, uh, what kind of theme you want, or whatever you ask us to do, we'll tune it up and make it a better deck Nipicking nerd style. Yeah, we got some. We got quite a few stipulations here by Fish Lamp Clock. His playgroup is very specific, and they have the following: no generic or one mana tutors, no dedicated combo. Critical mass combos are okay. For example, don't build up to Kiki Jiki Pestermite, but if you happen to find some four card thing accidentally, that's fine. No cards over fifty dollars. No generic staples like Necropotence, Cyclonic Rift, some of that quote unquote busted stuff. And every deck must contain one dragon. I thought that one was the most interesting. It is super interesting because we're gonna. There was the dragon that was in here, we thought stunk, and we thought we found an awesome, awesome replacement for it. So, so the first thing we gotta do before we do anything is read the commander so we can get an idea of what we wanna be doing. The commander is Yarrick the Desecrated. Two green, black, blue for a 3 5 lifelink death touch. Whenever a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, it happens twice. And there's actually a secret commander in this deck that is. Field of the Dead. Whenever a land is the battlefield, including Field of the Dead, if there are seven lands on your side with different names, get a 2-2 two, two zombie. So what is the theme of this deck? Because now we know the secret commander. Well, it's actually the best card in all of Magic. It's Field of the Dead. Uh, so the theme is spam Field of the Dead. Get a bunch of landfall triggers. Yarrick's going to double them. Twice as many zombies. Take advantage of the zombies. Play a bunch of other blink effects. And then we're going to get Field of the Dead active and make a loop of... Giant zombies. Yeah, and the bunch of zombies. Yeah, the reason Yarrick is leading this Field of the Dead deck is when Field of the Dead enters, if you have Yarrick out, you now get two zombies. So the whole goal is to just get a ton of zombies over on our opponents with all of this these land land. Field of the Dead triggers. Yeah, but we're gonna get multiple Field of the Deads too. Before we dive into the changes we made, which is a little different this time around, we got the best cards in the deck first, the things that were already in there that are doing the best work. Obviously, Sylvan Scrying and Expedition Map. Those are just going to find Field of the Deads. Or if we already have Field of the Dead, it finds some of the other best cards, Vesuva and Thespian Stage. Yeah, exactly. Those two are other, literally other Field of the Deads. We want to have not only Field of the Dead on the field, but Field of the Dead's friend, Field of the Dead, and its other friend, Field of the Dead. Which Distant is, relative Field yeah, of the Dead. Yeah, exactly. We want all three. We, we want to get as many as possible onto the battlefield. Other great cards for the deck are cards that give us extra land jobs. So this is your Azuzas. Dryad of the Elysian Grove, Swordtooth, the Dinosaur Dude, and AC, all giving us extra land drops. AC's extra good because on top of extra land drops, he also draws cards. And if we got fetch lands, which Fish Land Clock does, we can use Ramming Up Excavator, Ancient, Den Warden, Crucible of Worlds, and the fetches alongside each other to just go, oh, here's a bajillion landfall uh, things to turn. If you've got Ramming Up Excavator and Azusa, that's six landfall triggers with one fetch land. Yeah, exactly. So the fetch lands are some of the best cards in the deck by themselves. Mm -hmm. um, on top of the fact that, you know, we get to, you know, get two landfall triggers every single time we play them. Also, if we run out of, even if we run out of fetchables, they are still landfall triggers for us. As long as we have the life to pay to put it back in our graveyard, which is not nothing. It's definitely something. And if you don't know, in these land decks that can spam lands, lands from their graveyard, Strip mine's insane. That card's already insane. It should be in almost every single deck. This deck that can abuse it and make it a win con is even better. You can just take people out with this card. Ugh, it's such a it's such a it's such a mean card in this deck. It's such a fair card usually. This deck is a bully card. All right, we made this one nice and personal for your fish lamp clock. We're gonna show you every single cut and what it became in order to give you an idea of like what did we improve and why do we improve it. The first one, Omar the Hunt is out of this deck. 
Uh, it's too slow, it's too bulky, and it doesn't ramp fast enough. Easiest replacement in the world, three visits. You already had Nature's Lore in here. This is just another Nature's Lore, and it's at they're about the same price. You should be playing this. Omen of the Punt, okay. Three visits, one of the best ramp spells in the format. Dex already got oodles of synergy, so we want to make sure we're getting our early game taken care of, and some of that's going to mean trading some synergy for power, like with three, three visits, which is always on. Yes. We also took out Cultivate. We've talked about it before in the past. We're One, we're not a high basic deck. Yeah. We don't have a ton of basics in a deck, and we could easily run out if we're playing a ton of these only get basic cards. Instead, we replaced it with Hour of Promise. I love this card for Field of the Dead decks. If you're looking to spam it, perfect. Get the five mana, go get a Field of the Dead right away. It triggers twice because two lands enter at the same time. This is not just get basic. This is get literally any land. Often you might go Field of the Dead, fetch land. Then when they untap next turn, get another zombie. So now you got three zombies off of this one card. And if you really wanted to build around it, you could put in Desert to get more zombies. The joke I always make <laughs> is when you have Field of the Dead in your deck, this actually functions as intended without Deserts because <laughs> you get two zombies. And it's like, oh, you can make two zombies. Like, yeah, 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 I know. I know. I'm not going to worry about that. Kodama's Reach also got cut. Sky Shroud Claim, now that's a magic card. That's a sick one. It's right up there with three visits in Nature's Lore. Kind of like necessary. It'll always work. Even if you don't have Yarrick, you don't have to settle for below average ramp. It's two mana. The, it's, the cost is two mana right away. Yeah, exactly. It's the, Those two cards, it's the basics thing. is like one of their biggest drawbacks is we're not a basics deck. That's, yeah. We're Field of the Dead. If we put all these basics in to make these Cultivates and Kodama's Reaches work, our deck's going to be worse. We also took out Pernicious D. This is a board wipe that I never can find a home for. It's yeah. cool, unique, but not quite good. We added in a card I think is amazing in this deck, The Meat Hook Massacre. It's going to trigger twice on entry. So if you do X equals 2 on this Meat Hook Massacre, creatures will get minus 4, minus 4. This also weaponizes our zombies in a different way. We just have 10 zombies, but we can't be through with them? Okay, Meat Hook Massacre... Kill all the zombies, now they're dealing damage. And then every new zombie we play is in an empty board. It, it, it's not, Every new zombie we play is on an empty board, and it's also weaponized. You send it in for two, they chump it, they're still taking one. Right, other people are taking one now. Yeah, this I, I think Meadook Massacre is like perfect for this deck. Crush of Tentacles, another board wipe that's just not our style of play for this deck. It's not what we're trying to do. We definitely don't want to be bouncing everything. We have tokens Yeah, everywhere. So uh, the board wipe we added, Massacre Girl... It's almost one. It doubles up, which is weird. The the whole entire text box doubles up. So she enters the battlefield. Everything gets minus one, minus one. Then the chain starts. So as long as one creature dies with the regular Masker Girl, all your zombies are dying, which then kills the entire board. You just left with the Masker Girl, because one that's like the power of these zombies is they just make this card a uh, Wrath of God, but it's on a four four. But when you double it up with Yarok, even then. After all that happens, you get another one. So then everything gets minus one, minus one again, and then you do the whole thing. Which is going to guarantee... Everything's uh, dead. We have a field of dead deck, so it's going to guarantee that our zombie's going to die, and the chain's going to get going from that point to the point that the board will almost always be wiped when we cast it. We also cut... a So we added Massacre Girl. We cut Massacre Worm, and in its place, could have been Massacre Girl, but instead we put Toxic Deluge, one of the best board wipes in the whole entire format, and... Honestly, I just I can't bring myself not to play it. I almost wouldn't. I don't know if it's like it's pretty close to one of those like staples, but it's nowhere near broken. It's just like one of the best board ups you can play. So we're trading the power of the double ETB trigger, but it doesn't double the death trigger, so they still only lose two for each creature. So the minus four minus four on a six drop is like, eh? when we can have Masker Girl do it for five mana always, and then Tox and is just never going to miss. That card's amazing. It's really interesting. I consider the... So when you talked about the broken cards, and now this could be a change of philosophy, and you might not want these cards if you consider them, but I look at the, the board wipes, the removal, and the counter spells, and I never think of any of them as really necessarily broken because there's such a necessity to the game. Like, if you don't... If you just keep moving down, you keep getting worse and worse, like, removal, then the game, the decks that don't want an interaction are just getting better. Next thing we cut was Death Sprout. Destroys a creature, ramps us... It's a cool card, but I'm not super interested in it. Deadly Relic is the easiest replacement in the world. On its worst day, it's better than Death Sprout. Right, because you get this four mana exile, but you don't get a basic. But how many basics can we play? I know it triggers Field of the Dead, but we're always going to have Yark in play, presumably. That's what we want to be doing. We want to have Yark and Field of the Dead out at all times, and it doesn't matter what else we're doing because we're going to be winning that game. So let's just hold up free removal spell. I like When you control your commander, it's better than Swords to Plowshares, 
I don't know how this card isn't like in more decks. This, I mean, this card goes in every. When I build a black deck, I put Deadly Relic in every time. Uh, actually, I just built a black deck, put Deadly Relic in, and I think we only had like one left. And I thought we should order like five more Deadly Relics because I need. It's literally. It's like. Black deck, it's in. It's automatically in. It's that awesome. And it's not broken. It's just good. There's very few exceptions where your commander is not going to be in play much. Just obviously keep that in mind. But this is not one of those decks. We got re-sculpt because we're in green. So we don't have trouble answering artifacts at all. And then we're also in black, which doesn't have trouble answering creatures at all. So we don't need this. We don't need this at all. We have Nature's Claim instead. It's just cheaper, more efficient. Four life is nothing. It's flavor text. And it's the green swords. Yeah. Uh, re-sculpt is a great card, I think, for like blue is a deck. So it's like that is where you want this. Maybe Grixis decks. Yeah. Uh, that's maybe. that's that that's where you go to your re-sculpts. If you hit green and white, you can answer artifacts and enchantments in a more efficient way. Nature's Claim does that. Royal Elemental. I love this card. It's cool. But I, we don't have sack outlets. This isn't a sack deck. I think if you ever want to play Royal Elemental, the key is to have sack outlets. It's super important to make sure this card just doesn't get removed and have done nothing. Uh, instead, we added a different landfall card. It's Dread Presence. Whenever a swamp enters, we get to choose one of two. We get to either deal two, gain two, or draw a card, lose a life. Super awesome card. It's going to actually be removal because this deck does... If you look at the metabase, you just go, What? swamps, but the thing is, we're just going to go get an Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth, and we also have Cabal Coffers in this deck, so when we're not getting Field of the Dead and its companions, we're going to be getting that and going off, and now Dread Presence is Landfall, Deal 2, Gain 2, or Draw Card? Um, okay, because that's also doubled with Yarok. It's insanity. Yeah, this deck, like you just said, has lots of ways to find Field of the Dead, but we have to weaponize those cards when we're not playing Field of the Dead. It's like, if my, my Sylvan Scrying gets Field of the Dead the first time, okay, now my Expedition map, you can't just go get a basic. That's boring. You don't want to get a fetch. Maybe maybe you get a fetch if, like, you need to set something up with, like, your play from the graveyard stuff, but most of the time, you just need to go get other lands, and Urborg is perfect, especially with Dread Presence in our list. And Cabal Coffers. So we also have, there was a Moldrotha in the deck. I get the idea. It lets you replay Field of the Dead. I don't think Field of the Dead's really going to die all that often in this deck. What's going to happen probably is we have one turn where we're shields down with one field of the dead but as soon as we untap there's going to be another field of the dead so at that point there's nothing they can do and we don't even really need more than one to start destroying people but we're going to have more with one anyway so we cut Moldrotha for hostage taker this is a sick one because it doubles up you steal two things basically you just have to pay their mana costs there's plenty of soul rings running around there's all these efficient artifacts and dumb creatures you can send people's command commanders back to the command zone it's amazing i think hostage taker is just a great card it's yeah. an under it, it's an underplayed card and commander if you should i i would strongly suggest that some players just check it out and try it in more decks and we're doubling off the trigger so we're in for it it's pretty close to agent of treachery which we know is insane next on the chopping block courser of crufix and i'm going to lump Aug augur of autumn in because both of these cards are like Card advantage, when we have our extra land drops, we can play all the stuff off the top, all our lands off the top. And with Augur, we can play creatures too. I think that's all right, but that's really take advantage of Yarrick as much as I want to. So this is where we're making up for some of that uh, losing, like, Omen of the Hunt for nature's lore. We're going to add in Coiling Oracle and Risen Reef, which double up. Hello, Amber. Thank you. Which double up and get us twice the triggers for a ton of ramp and card draw. Next, we cut Gadwick the Wizened. Cute. Not good. Uh, we'll double up the card draw, but not that great. Why, if we're playing AC, do we not got Tatiova? I, it's so weird for me. It's like, if you put AC in the deck, it feels like Tatiova's right behind him every single time. Yeah, they're like best friends. So I would definitely recommend... <laughs> thank you, Amber. Thank you, Amber. I would definitely recommend adding both in. We also get a little bit of life gain. Yes, we also cut Dragonlord Slumguard. That was his dragon for the deck, seeing as each one of uh, the decks in this friend group need to have a dragon. We added in Kura the Boundless Sky. Oh, yeah. Absolutely perfect for this deck. It dies and tutors up three lands. It could be well, all three Field of the Deads. I mean, it can, it can be all three Field of the Deads. If you have a Field of the Dead out already, you can get, like, uh, one of the copies. You can get Cabal Coffers, Urborg. This is just a very powerful magic card. And it's if you need a dragon in your landfall deck, I can't think of a better one than this. Yeah, we need a dragon. I don't think Dragon's Lone is going to cut it. We don't have Sack Outlets, so we can't take advantage of stealing people's stuff. Mole Drifter. It's a sweet one, but we cut it. Uh, Nylea's Intervention. There's a Mole Drifter because guess what? It goes and finds Field of the Dead, Cabal Coffers, Orborg, Strip Mine, whatever you want under the sun. So you can kind of pay the same mana, five, but you're drawing three, and it's more important cards a lot of the time because it's lands. It's kind of like, would I rather draw four off a double Mole Drifter or get triple Demonic Tutor? Yeah, it scales also uh, into the late game where you can just go get like seven lands, just 
thin out your deck, put them all in your hand, maybe disc, maybe you have to discard a few to the graveyard, whatever, and then on top of that, it wipes out flyers if yeah. you really need it to. It's as a versatile other mode that's just a, a flying board wipe. It's a hurricane. Yeah, I'd say 5% of the time you're going to just go, wow, I'm overwhelmed by flyers. Oh, look, they're dead. Yeah, they get them out of here. Next we got Palancron. I don't have a problem with this card or it being in the deck. It's every Yarrick deck, if you really want to push the limits of strength, should be playing a Palancron because it's a two-card combo with your commander. But this deck doesn't want to be comboing. It's yeah. intended to be comboing. So we took it out because we are we want this deck to focus on Field of Dead. I think it's to this deck's detriment that Palancron is in here because we talked you, you talked about in the restrictions, Fish Land Clock, not wanting win-by-themselves combos. Like This is a one-card combo because if you have Yarrick and Palancron, you want to have 14 lands, but it only costs 11 to, to bounce and replay Palancron. So that's just infinite mana right there. The game's over. I mean, that kind of just takes away from the fun little thing we're doing with Field of the Dead. It's like, hey, watch out for my Field of the Dead. But what they're actually going to be watching out for is Palancron. Yeah, exactly. So we added in, I thought this was this is one of the last ads. Oh, yeah. I'm really I'm really happy about this one because I think it's what this is. This is the idea of the deck. Mm -hmm. It's reshape the earth. We just get 10 lands from our deck into play. This is going to trigger Field of the Dead like crazy. Hopefully, we already have one in place. So we can get the Vesuva, double up on the triggers, get 40 zombies, and God, well, well, go we, crazy. If we, have, if we already have all three Field of the Deads in play, we go get 10 lands, and it's what, 120 power? No, not, how, or even on, not, how, or is it 120 zombies? Because we, So <laughs> one land gets us six zombies, but we're getting 10. So we get 60 zombies, which is 120 power. Yeah, exactly. So that's With Yark. We're just going to get a... So many zombies with this card. It's awesome. Also, you can get fetch lands, and then when you untap next turn, get more zombies out of this. I really like the idea of slamming one of these giant spells and then just going, hey, I was holding this Meat Hook Massacre. All right, you're dead. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that'd be, that's exactly... That's why I like Meat Hook Massacre so much, is that you can... For... Uh, it's the nine-mana spell, then a two-mana uh, then a three-mana spell, because we need to kill all of our guys. You could just turn it into a win. It's not a combo, but it is weaponizing Field of the Dead, and that that is what the deck wants to do. Yeah, Meat Hook Massacre ended up impressing us a little bit at the, the lower to mid power levels, but oh my god, is that card not worth $45? Oh, I, that's, what? that's the only reason I don't play it in any decks. I, like a, if it was I'm 15 like, I'd be like, maybe. It's just like not it's not on the scale of I'd rather buy three Toxic Deluges or however much that card exactly. is. Exactly! Toxic what? Deluge. I'd rather have, would you rather have two Toxic Deluge? I'd rather or have one. <laughs> it, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> What was the next cut? That's Obnix was the fall, and I get the idea. We're going to make somebody lose six, and he's going to get big, but he's basically a vanilla creature, and we're not going to dedicate any space to pumping him. So he really only loses three life, but we can add Tireless Provisioner and turn our landfalls into extra permanents with food. Maybe maybe if we want to gain life in the later game, we can do that. But really, we want treasures, and we want two treasures whenever we play a land. Yeah, much like I mentioned that Tatiova is always falling close behind AC, I feel like Tireless Tracker is usually it's vice versa. Now... Tyrus Provisionary and Tracker just go together. Yeah. It's going to be very rare that you don't want both in the deck. And if you only want one, it's Provisionary for me. It makes me sad. But it's less fun, but probably just better. Yeah. It's the whole, uh, do I want mana or cards thing? And the Landfall decks kind of just want mana. Yeah, exactly. Uh, next cut, Panamonicon. I get it. It's cute. It doubles our triggers just like Yark. But it doesn't trigger our feel, or it doesn't double our feel of the dead triggers, which is what we're interested in. So... That's not going to work. So we added Kodama of the East Tree. Now here's an accidental combo. Mm -hmm. You have Field of the Dead, you got this, and you got... Uh, Cynic Growth Cynic Chamber. Cynic Growth Chamber. It's just infinite zombies. But it uses Field of the Dead specifically. It's infinite zombies. That's right. what's really, really important. And besides anything, Kodama's a busted magic card. Oh, my God. We have to go back and give this thing a 10 for power eventually. Because yeah, well, I think it, we gave it an 8 or something in the, because in the it rank. Because it was... Because it is like, this is really good. It's like, no, it's insane. If you untap with Kodama, your turn's going to take 10 minutes guaranteed because it does way too many things. Yeah, Kodama's so bad. And you double the triggers with, <laughs> with Garak. Yeah, and then we did a few land uh, improvements here. First thing we cut, Sunken Hollow. We just didn't quite need this in the deck. No, we need Forest. Yeah, we need Forest. We added in... Belly Gap Recovery, MDFC. I mean, now we have more spells and the same amount of lands. Yep, we got Rhymewood Falls coming out for Boseju, who endures. You knew these lands were going to be in a Yarrick deck. I mean, we can play them from the graveyard with all of our Crucible of Worlds effects. So, yeah, Forest gets cut for Takanuma. Island gets cut for Atawara. I've seen these cards in, like, two games, and I'm like, wow. We need 50 of each because they're insanely good. They're insanely efficient, maybe. They're not busted effects. They're just great to have because it's on a forest. Yeah. So the easiest thing, another thing about these, just like we mentioned before, you have 
Beseju, Takanuma, and Ottawa now in your land slots, turning and weaponizing your tutors for land. It's having this versatility in our land slot just takes it. Like, MDFCs, this is a strength that MDFCs did not have. MDFCs had, like, you know, they were a little more powerful and they had more of an effect. They These straight up can be tutored with our Sylvan Scrines, mm -hmm. our maps, our Nylea's Interventions, all these cards that we were going to play anyway. Now they're weaponized into new, into spells. All three of them are, are well, two of them are interaction, and one of them is like a, a card selection or recursion. That's what I wanted to, wanted to say. And it's like, I can go find this with Expedition Map? Okay. Yeah. Deal. Absolutely amazing. But that is your brand new deck, my friend. I hope you enjoy it. It's super awesome. Special shout outs to all of our patrons, including you, Fish Lamp Clock. Just want to say again at the end here, this video was dedicated to Samson, the goodest boy owned by Fish Lamp Clock, who has passed away. So if you want to give him some positivity in the comments, I'm sure he'd really appreciate it. Yes. All right. So the last thing we do in every video is a t tidbit about our lives. Literally, in the middle of recording, our friend is showing up to play some commander. So we're literally ending this video. And the patrons are probably scrolling faster than usual because we did this a little quick because we got to go play Commander with our friend because she's downstairs with some Mighty Taco. If you don't know what Mighty Taco is, Google it. It's a local thing. It's a local thing. Peace out, Tribe Scouts.